This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, you're going to learn about the chain rule, and I'm going to derive it for you. So uh, be prepared to, one, understand what the chain rule actually says, um, and then we're going to talk about some notation, and then actually get into the derivation of the chain rule. All right, let's get started. Let's talk about the chain rule. What does the chain rule say? The chain rule says if two functions f and g are differentiable, remember that if two functions are differentiable, they're also continuous, that if I want to take this function and I want to find its derivative. Now classically we write like a little prime sign to indicate them taking the derivative of this whole thing. So if you're taking the derivative of a composition of functions, it's equal to the derivative of the function keeping the variable the same times the derivative of the variable or whatever was inside. It'll become more apparent um, how this is used later when we see uh, examples in another video. Uh, I'm just going to prove this uh, as we go along. Let's talk about what derivatives mean and how you could write them. Uh, you know, it has been written in the past that just writing this little prime sign means we're taking the derivative of x, um, I'm sorry, derivative of f with respect to x, um, derivative um, it just means the slope, right? This just means what is the slope of the tangent line? So sometimes we say slope of tangent line. Um, but if we're really going to get sophisticated, it really means delta y over delta x if you're talking about x's and y's in a plane and keeping in mind of course that there's a limit involved where this delta x has to approach zero all of these things mean the same thing however new notation that you may see uh, you will see is that you're gonna see this df dx that means the same thing we're taking the derivative of f with respect to x sometimes I've seen the same thing written like this um, and you'll see a function written over here. So we're taking the derivative of this function with respect to x. And actually you'd put in, you know, what the function is here. Okay, so you sometimes see this. And then sometimes we even take uh, other functions and we find the derivatives with respect to other variables, like let's say time. Okay, so these all mean the same thing. It's slope of the tangent line, but then the notation looks a little strange but you should understand that before you jump into the chain rule. Well, let's talk about the derivative of a function with respect to x. Let's talk about what it means. Well, really, this just means we're taking the limit as x the delta x, sorry, approaches 0 of delta y over delta x. Remember, this is the definition of what uh, slope means, right? Isn't slope just the change in y over the change in x? And we're throwing in the concept of a limit because we're really specifically talking about the slope of a tangent line. Okay, so what I want to do is do a little bit of algebra here. Um, what I want to do is I want to take this ratio, delta y over delta x, and I want to switch it. I want to switch that into the product of two ratios. So I still have my ratio. It's just I'm splitting it, splitting it across two uh, ratios, product of two ratios. And I'm really going to multiply the numerator by delta u and the denominator by delta u. So it's really the same. So these this expression over here is the same as this expression over here, so I really have two equivalent expressions in total. Okay, so hmm, I'm taking the limit 
of a product. The limit of a product is equal to the product of the limits. It's a property of limits. So I'm going to put down uh, the limit as delta x approaches 0 of our first ratio. And take the limit as delta x approaches 0 of our second ratio. So what I want to do is understand what this means. And in order to understand what it means, um, it's helpful to look at this graphically. So I'm going to scroll, give myself some room, because I'm about to paste in some things. And let's talk about what the functions um, could look like. Now, of course, this is just a generic function g. So let's say we got this generic function g. It doesn't have to be decreasing. And then let's say I've got this other function f. does not have to be increasing. But let's say here the independent variable for the g function is x and the depend, dependent variable is u. Okay, and over here I'm going to have, this is really going to be u. In other words, it's g of x. And here the dependent variable is y. All right, well, if you were to take some point x1, match it up, course you're going to have u1 and then of course if you have an x2 you're going to have its uh, corresponding uh, dependent variable u2. Um, if we let a little point here imagine a little point going over here and we're going to let delta x okay remember this distance over here is delta x, the change in x, we're letting that shrink, right? That's how we find the tangent line, the slope of the tangent line. We let that shrink, so the point over here slithers across this line, and it lands up over here, and we can find the slope of the tangent line at that point. Okay, that's how we deal with it. So if you look at our first, or sorry, the second limit, this just means I'm finding the derivative of this u, right? I'm just finding that I'm taking the derivative of u with respect to x. Okay, what does the other one mean? A little bit uh, more difficult to understand because I have delta x. Hey, there's no delta x in this picture. You're going to, or diagram. So you're going to say, hey, this over here is really u1, and this is really u2 and they have corresponding dependent variables y1 this is y2 and you're saying hey how could we let dx uh, the change of x there's no x's here okay well let's think about this in this diagram going back to the g diagram over here we could see that here's delta x and this distance here is representative of delta u as delta x shrinks, right, as this point over here shrinks over or slithers across g over to this point, I know that delta x shrinks to zero, but then again, it makes sense that this vertical distance is going to shrink to zero also. So even though it says delta x is going to zero, well, I know that as delta x goes to zero, I also know that delta u is going to go to the zero. So this right here is the equivalent of saying delta u, or maybe I should say it's a consequence. Delta u going to zero is a consequence. And so I can now figure out what this limit represents. It just means I'm finding the derivative of y with respect to u. Okay, so that's what that represents, right? And, of course, I know the original was dy over dx. Okay, well, I'm going to now scroll a little bit here to give myself some room. So let's go all the way over here. And let's figure out what this, you know, interpret what this means with the old notation that we used to use. Like, for instance, 
we knew that um, the original problem was really f of g of x and we were finding the derivative of it and we're saying oh this is really the derivative of this f function with respect to u but u is really g of x okay and I know that this second over here I'm finding the derivative of u that's g with respect to x and there you have it you have the chain rule okay so I would really appreciate it if you like the video subscribe to the channel that'd be awesome and uh, please go back to mathguide.com where we have literally hundreds of lessons uh, interactive quizzes and instructional videos take care have a great day